Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. This is another in my series of uh, buying low-grade comics as an investment tool. So um, I don't necessarily buy comics as an investment. I They are an investment. I, I realize that. But I buy them out of my love for the comics generally. I, I really do love the comics. I, I buy keys that I always wanted. I always wanted to have the first Wonder Woman or the first X-Men or first whatever major character it is. And this guide that I'm trying to create right now is kind of going beyond that and looking at as an investment kind of tool. Uh, you know, instead of your 401k, well, <laughs> maybe, maybe looking at comics. Um, so what kind of comics should you look at as um, an investment. Usually when they they talk about these kind of investment grade comics, they're talking about the 9.8s. They're talking about those really high graded comics. Well, I actually believe that there is some um, you know merit to the low grades where you can actually get a low grade comic and use it as an investment. So I'm going to show you another in this series. <laughs> And we're going to see how well it performs in the low grades. So um, I'm going to show you this one. This is another. This guide that I'm trying to create is really about keys, though, uh, blue chip comics. And that's really important to know. You, I, I wouldn't recommend buying some modern comic that's all beaten up. That's not going to cut it. It, it has to have some strong merit behind it. So blue chip comics, but major keys, low grade. That's the whole point that I have to make here. And th this is an, ex an example of that. This is a low grade. So when I say low grade, I'm saying three or less. Uh, and that's not to disparage them. I buy them myself. So <laughs> I'm just saying that these are considered low grade. And a 2.5 is a fairly low grade. It's it actually doesn't present that bad considering it is kind of a low grade. <laughs> um, but this is a major key. Uh, it's the first appearance of the Sandman. He appeared in one of the Spider-Man movies and uh, just a really cool character uh, that I liked. And this is his first appearance. So Amazing Spider-Man number four. Now, when I bought this, uh, it was like end of last year mid mid to end of last year, I believe, and I paid $500 for it. So even though it's, as I said, this is not about buying cheap comics. <laughs> this is about buying blue chips and blue chips are expensive. And even in um, a low grade, they're expensive. So this is still looking at these things as investments. And you'll, you'll notice it's a, it's a two five. Blue label, I'm, I'm going to focus on blue labels. Um, the reason I focus on blue labels as the investment tool is um, generally you're safer with a blue label. I, I'd recommend getting a blue label if you're looking at it as an investment. There's just too many uh, variables with the, the purple labels, and they're not necessarily a good investment tool, though they can be resold and stuff. Blue label is kind of a little bit safer bet. So I know I did a whole series on rest, restored comics and, and how they are a good uh, you know, thing to get into, but um, we're gonna focus on blue labels just for this series. So with all that said, <laughs> um, I'm gonna show you how much this comic is currently worth and how it fared compared to the higher grade comics. So I'm gonna switch screens and I'm going to show you how it fared. So this is Amazing Spider-Man number four, first appearance. Of and you'll notice that actually a 9.8 would be worth 1.4 million. That's pretty crazy. Actually, uh, X-Men number one, when I did my video on that, the fair market value for that in a 9.8 was actually less than a million. So this actually has a higher 9.8 uh, value than <laughs> X-Men number one. And the reason for that is this is actually a rare comic. Um, and there is no nine eights on the census. So if ever a uh, nine eight ever popped up, 
it would be extremely rare and people would be willing to pay for it a lot more. So that being said, there's just none of this grade. And, you know, so this is kind of a spec number. It doesn't really mean anything. The real number to look at is the, the 9.6, which is, you know, 200,000. Pretty big number. That's a huge amount of money to invest in one thing. So it's sort of like, that's another kind of point that I kind of want to make with these lower grades. You can actually purchase a bunch of them and maybe do better than just putting all your eggs in one basket. So uh, generally, um, when people buy stocks, uh, it's sort of like you invest in like 10 companies. You expect, you know, most of them to sort of break even and maybe, you know, go up a little bit. Some will just kind of fade out altogether and maybe fail. And then you'll have a few that are a home run where you get really good return on your investment. Well, the same applies for comics. So if you put all your eggs in one basket, then all of a sudden, you know, if that comic, for whatever reason, like it's not hot anymore or whatever, well, then you're stuck with something where you put a lot of money into one thing. So these low grades give you that ability to kind of spread your investment, kind of spread your risk, I should say. Keep it in an investment term. So let's look at the low grades. So as I said, I paid um, 500 for mine. And that was like at the end of last year sometime. Now it's already gone up. This is the fair market value. It, the, if you go to eBay, the prices are even higher than this. So that's the most recent sale was in February. So very recent. Um, and it was for 675. So it's even gone up since I bought it. When I bought it, I felt like I was paying a lot. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was really at the top of the market and it's already gone up since then. So what we can do is we can dig, dive deeper and see how the prices have really gone up over time. So you'll notice that high end grade actually went down and the 9.8, uh, 9.0, I should say. And part of the reason why the higher grades go down is sometimes it's a little harder to sell those high, high grades. There's just not as many people looking. And somebody that's buying a nine might have the money to say, hey, I don't I want to hold out for an even higher grade. And so there might be even the ones that are willing to buy at that high grade might not be willing to, to buy that grade because they want even better grade. So that's something to be aware of. So if you look, there was some in the lower grades that kind of faded, but my grade, the one that I bought, the 2.5, actually performed the best. It had a 57.7% increase in value. And, you know, sometimes you'll see these numbers where it is down, and that's because maybe somebody pay, overpaid for that low grade. Now, normally you say, oh, that's really terrible. However, I see that as a good thing. And I'll explain that to you. And this is why I kind of chose this example, because I wanted to show you that even though it might be down, um, it sometimes shows you that there are people that are willing to overspend on a comic, and especially these low grades. Because what happens is people really want that character. They might get kind of like excited and try to buy it because they know that they might never get that high-end grade one, but they, they just want to get that entry-level comic. So they'll overspend sometimes to just to get that just to get the, that comic in their hands. And you'll see that. So sometimes there's a bit of a correction and that happens, but it's not something to be scared of. So I just wanted that to be aware, aware of that. But in terms of my investment, I bought it at a good, a good grade, <laughs> uh, 2.5, and it just happened to have a pretty good return, 57.7% return. That's not a bad return on a half a year's investment. So uh, this has just been a quick video on these kind of comics, low-grade comics as an investment tool. Um, I'm not trying to say that I'm like the marketing genius or, or something where I, you know, uh, that you can, you know, that this is the way to go with your investments, but it is something to consider. And if you kind of look at the numbers, 
and do your homework. I always recommend doing homeworks. So if you're going to buy stocks, if you're going to buy whatever it is, do your homework, especially if you're looking at it as an investment. But by buying these lower grades, you're minimizing your risk. And that's the real point that I'm trying to make in this video is how to minimize your risk by buying something that's a little bit more affordable and not putting all the eggs in one basket. You can kind of minimize your risk and do get a pretty good return on your investment. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out the other videos in the series. Um, and um, keep collecting. <laughs> Enjoy your comics. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.